understand that there's a there's a practical way of living. You know, we we get we come in we come into church and we hear a word uh, and and we hear a, a inspiring message. But there's a practical way to living. And when we talk about a practical way, that's uh, you have to actually put what you heard into into practice into play. Amen. And so we're talking about the kingdom. And I want to I want to talk tonight from this subject. Uh, we, uh, we're going to go to Matthew chapter six, verse thirty-three. Is going to be our foundation scripture on tonight. But I want to I want to um, talk from this subject on tonight as I get to my notes real quick. Uh, I want to talk talk from this subject tonight. How how to seek the kingdom? How to seek the kingdom? Um, of course, Matthew chapter thir uh, chapter th six, verse thirty-three is a very very familiar passage of scripture, and we hear it read and hear quite a bit. You hear me talking about it, you read it quite a bit, but I want to um, go um, a little deeper tonight. I want to give you some um, some practical tools that you can take in pursuing the kingdom. And remember I said over the last couple of Sundays or even the last couple of weeks that we must be relentless in our pursuit of the kingdom. When you pursue, pursue something, you go after it. So we must be in, we must be relentless in our pursuit of the kingdom of God. So Matthew chapter, we began reading at chapter at verse 25. But our foundation scripture tonight is coming from Matthew 36 and 33. We'll start at verse 25. And I'm reading out of the New King James translation for those that are following along with me. It says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat what you would drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more than that, more value than they? Verse 27 says, which of, you, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his statue? Verse 28, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the, lily, the lilies of the, of, the, of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet, I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you, o, o you of little faith? Verse 30 through 31 says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need uh, that you need all these things. Verse thirty-three. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And I will go ahead and read verse thirty-four as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is his own trouble. Amen. Again, for our uh, foundational scripture tonight is coming from verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Now when you look at verse 25 to verse 32, it talk, Jesus focuses on, on as he's teaching and, and, and by the way, let me say this: um, in, in chapter in chapter five of of Matthew, Jesus is actually begins preaching the uh, teaching the, what we what we know is the Sermon on the Mount. And so this act, this teaching is actually it actually goes from chapter five to verse to chapter eight to chapter eight from from chapter five to chapter eight. But here he's talking about what seems to be 
man's concern. When we look at humanity today, these are the things that they're concerned about. They're concerned about their well-being. They're concerned about security. They're concerned about money. They're concerned about all of the things that Jesus listed in uh, Matthew chapter, verse 25 through 32. Those things are the things that he said the Gentiles seek. Now, when you think about, when you when you read, you study up on the Gentiles, the Gentiles were, um, they were not God's chosen people. The Jews were. But because the Jews were so stiff-necked and hard-headed and seemed to uh, not see that God was making their life better, he made it visible and made it possible for the Gentiles to enter into the kingdom. And that's what we all, we all are. We are a part of that Gentile community where we have been grafted in. And Paul talks about that in his writing. So when Jesus speaks of the Gentiles, that's what he's speaking of, those that are outside the kingdom. So he, he talks about those things that are a concern for people. And so he goes on to say that um, after, all, after saying all those things, he said, but it, for those of you that are in the kingdom of God, there are two things that you have to be, that you have to focus on. Two things. So instead of you focusing on food, clothing, shelter, um, uh, your career and all that, he said there's two things that you need to focus on. He said those two things that you need to focus on is first, seek the kingdom of God, and second, his righteousness. Now, obviously, they're two, they don't mean the same thing because we see the and there, okay? So we see that he said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So let's look at these three keys. There are three keys that, that, that can simplify your life. Now, let me say this because this is a practical teaching tonight. When we talk about practical teaching, that means we're, we're taking what we're learning tonight and we're putting it into practice. See, it does us no good to read the word and we don't put it into practice. So I want to give you some practical teaching on tonight on how to seek the kingdom. Because we hear seek the kingdom, but how, Pastor Tony, do I seek the kingdom? So I'm going to give you some tools tonight that you can take home. And you can, so if you're taking notes, you can write this down. If you're using your phone to take notes, you can do that as well. But there's three keys that, and it's, it's maybe more than this, but there's two, three keys that really stick out that can really simplify your life. The first one is priority. Priority. And if you want to, if you're looking for an acronym, it's POD, P-O-D, POD, P-O-D. So the first one is priority. When we think about priority, we think about what order, right? What, what, what we put in order, arrangement. And then the second one, the second key is organization. Organization. Now we're talking about simplifying life. You know when life is, when you make life complicated, guess what you invite in? Mountains of stress. When you make life complicated. But do you know these things that I'm giving you can make your life simple? You can simplify life, your life and you can eliminate stress by doing these things. So the first one is priority. This is, uh, this is putting things in proper order. And then organization. What is important? We think about something being organized. You organize things according to what is important, right? And then the third thing is discipline. That's a big one for us, right? Because we can start off, we can start something and do so well. We can start out of the gates and start out of the starting block so well. And before we can get, before we can get on a on a, a, a good pace, get a good pace going, we're, t we're tired, we're worn out. And so discipline is self-imposed restrictions. So what are you, what boundaries are you setting for your life? What, what boundaries are you setting? We all need to set boundaries for our life, correct? What boundaries are you setting for your life? So priority, so how do I prioritize my life? And all this is going to tie in, so just follow me. How, how do I prioritize my life? Put things in order. What is important? Because a lot of times, a lot of times we, we put so much time and energy in things that are not important. Time and energy in things that God has not signed off on or ordained. And it causes unneeded, unwanted stress. Amen? Have you ever had unneeded, unwanted stress? Amen? And I guarantee you, if we put these things into play, our lives, our days, 
will be simplified. If you can simplify, forget the whole month. If you can learn to simplify your day, if we can learn to simplify our day, can you imagine how much easier life would be? I was talking to my pastor on yesterday, and I was telling him, I said, that'd be a good sermon. He said, man, he said, it'd be nice if we could just live a, live a drama-free life. He said, a drama-free life is the best life. I said, that'll preach right there. And it's true. But how much of the drama is on us? How much, how much of it is on us? How much drama do we invite in our lives and do we cause? So how much of it is us? So I think it's, this is so befitting because we're in the second half of the year. And you know you notice this time of the year, people start getting kind of tired. Kind of start getting exhausted. Not everybody, but some people do. And their light start flickering. It ain't going out just yet. But it's flickering. They struggling. They like, man, every now and then they got to blow on it to get it going. So how many people this time of the year are just kind of burnt out? They're tired. And they wonder, man, my first five months was just like, as they would say, hell on wheels. But God, I, I was praying earlier and I said, Lord, send a surge of refreshment on your people. But when he sent it, what you going to do with it? What you going to do with it when you get that second win? Are you going to capitalize on it? What are you going to do with it? So how do I prioritize my life? What is important? First of all, you got to know all what you got going on. And some things that you have going on, this is not of importance right now. It should be at the bottom of your list. But what is important? And then how can I organize it? How can I organize it? And discipline myself. This is what the disciples, the, the disciples' job all along was to follow Jesus as students. And he was teaching them how to be how to be to live a disciplined life. That's what a kingdom living is all about. Living a disciplined life. And look at uh again, Matthew 36 and 33 says, to, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Jesus taught these two priorities to seek the kingdom and to seek God for righteousness. Uh, let's, let's break those two things down. Now, to seek means to what? Pursue. But also to seek means in our, in our uh, from our uh, understanding, to seek means to study. So if, you, if you're seeking the kingdom, you're pursuing the kingdom. You're going after the, the kingdom. You're, you're going after the kingdom. So when you study up on the kingdom, when you're pursuing the kingdom, you, you, we must learn to study the kingdom by learning the laws and the principles of the kingdom. Amen? The laws and the, and the principles of the kingdom is what governs our lives. So you can be in the kingdom and not know the laws. Just like we can be in the United States and not know none of the laws. And you can be breaking all the laws and wouldn't, be, and wouldn't know so the kingdom of God is governed by laws and principles. So when we pursue the kingdom, we are in pursuit of, of, of God's laws and his principles of the kingdom. We are in pursuit of God's mind, his heart, his character, how he wants us to live in the kingdom of God. And so that's when we pursue his, when we pursue him, then all these other things will come. Pursue him, and then Jesus said, and his righteousness. Now let's talk about righteousness. Prophet Spamalak gave a prophetic word, I think last Wednesday on the call, about getting in position. Righteousness is not a religious terminology. Righteousness is a legal terminology, and righteousness deals with positioning. So it's getting in alignment, putting getting yourself in alignment and getting in position. And, and, and this is so important because if we're in position, we'll know what God wants of us, what God expects of us. Where we're supposed to be, when we're supposed to be there, all the things that's that's tied to our destiny. If we're in position, then guess what? Your your eyesight will be so clear on where you're supposed to go. The reason why so many people are struggling because they are out of alignment, they are out of position. When you get out of position, you lose your place. You know, you know when we were coming up, you get in the line at school. And you got out of line, guess what? You lost your place. No need coming back up, get fussing, 
Come out. I had that spot. You got out of line. So we got to re, we got to put you, replace you. Thank God he's not like that. Thank God that if you get out of position, you can get back in position and get and, and, and pick up from where you left off. That's so awesome about God. But alignment deals with positioning. And this is so important because if we're going to live in God's kingdom, we need to be in alignment with God. So how do we get in position with God? Remember, this is practical teaching tonight. We get in alignment by studying his word. We get in alignment by spending time with God and spending time with God in prayer and making your prayer life relationship based and not religious based. Relationship based means when you spend time with a person, you're getting to know them. We get to know, we get to learn about God and get to know God through his word. And we see God as daddy. We see God as father. We see God as family and not a higher being. When you spend time with God, this is this is when you know you're in a relationship with God. When you can spend time in your word, and before you can finish reading, your your eyes are just Welling, well, swollen with water, and the tears are beginning to flow, flow because you're thinking about how good God is because you read something that He said. That's how you know you're in relationship, and it's just not it's not just a a, a religious ritual like some people do. Some people just read their Bible and they they boast and brag about reading their Bible every day, but they're not living anything that this thing is this Bible is speaking. So your, your, your prayer time should be an intimate time. We must learn how when we go into prayer, spend time with God. Not trying to figure out how eloquent our prayer could be. But how, yeah, matter of fact, God don't care. Your prayer could be so broken, but it's your heart that he's after. You get in, the, in your time of prayer, and, your, and God's like, but, but, but I just love that he, that he or she have a heart after me. That's how we get in position. That's how we learn how to live uh, in the kingdom of God. That's how we, we learn to, 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 to connect with God. The next thing that Jesus spoke of, and this was in Matthew chapter 5 or 6, he said that he that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. He that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now, we talk about seeking, but what about thirst? What about thirst? You know, thirst is natural, right? All of us, listen, you don't have to tell your body to get thirsty. Do you? When you get thirsty, guess what you're fixing to do? You're going to grab some water, you're going to get something. You're, because it's, 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 you are naturally wired to get thirsty in the natural. Do you know spiritually you are, natu you are spiritually wired to be thirsty? There's a craving. When you're thirsty, there's a craving for something to drink. There's a craving for water. And Lord knows if you get thirsty enough, and it's nothing, and, and, you know, that's like the people that's that's out there that's, that, that, that may not have clean water, but if they get thirsty enough, guess what? They, because they're because they're they're wired to be thirsty, they'll drink whatever they can find. Because it's a it's a it's a wiring. You are wired spiritually to be thirsty. You are wired spiritually to be hungry. Now, let me ask you something. In the natural, when you get hungry, maybe sometimes we do this and we're really, really busy. But in the natural, most times, when you get hungry and your stomach tells you hungry, do you ignore it? <laughs> sometimes we do. Not all the time. What about when you're thirsty? Sometimes we ignore it. We cannot ignore it. There's a spiritual thirst and a spiritual hunger. And if you're not careful, you will, you will ignore it. God will always bring something in your life, in a season in your life, that will trigger your hunger. You have to pay attention to it. What is triggering your hunger in this season? It may be God may be working on you with your character. Is that what, is that what you need to be studying? Is that what's triggering your hunger right now? I'm going to tell you what's triggering my hunger right now. Rebranding. That thing has been so strong in my spirit about rebranding. I'm taking notes. I'm studying because that's a spiritual hunger that I have right now. And so I'm studying. I study my body to know when there's a spiritual hunger. And so there's a spiritual hunger and a spiritual thirst. So when you are hungry and you're thirsty for God, then guess what you're going to do? You're going to pursue him. Amen. 
No, see, when you're hungry and you're thirsty for God, no one has to force you. When you're hungry and you're thirsty for God, no one has to pump you and prime you. You don't even have, listen, you'll be the first person to the prayer room. Why? Because there's a hunger and a thirst. And that's something, guess what? We can't give you. We can't teach them their thirst. Because why? You're naturally wired with it. I don't tell a baby to be hungry. The baby cry when you're hungry. The baby cry when hungry or thirsty or dirty. There's a sound. You make a sound. But how often do you ignore your hunger pains? Because you have them. You know you have spiritual hunger pains and the devil will confuse you and make you think, oh, it ain't nothing. No, that's God speaking to you. To work on this. I need to work on this. So the thirst and the hunger is not just a natural thing, but it's also spiritual. It's a craving. We must crave the kingdom. Then again, we talk about righteousness being its alignment, it's being in uh, positioning ourselves uh, in the kingdom. And when we, when we position ourselves, when we properly position ourselves in the kingdom, this is what we gain. Number one, wisdom. You gain wisdom. You gain the wisdom of God. Not man's wisdom. Because man, God's wisdom will always override man's wisdom. But we gain the wisdom of God. Number two, we gain direction. How many people need direction? We all need direction. You need the wisdom of God. You need direction. And then number three, instruction. Direction and instruction are not the same thing. Direction is where you're going. The instruction is how you do it or what, you, what to do. That's your instruction. What do I do? Okay, I have the wisdom that God is telling me to do this. God is speaking to me to do this in this season. Now, next, where do I go? And God said, I want you to do this in this season, and this is where I want you to go. And when you get there, this is what I want you to do. So Moses, the people are thirsty. Listen to me carefully. The people are thirsty. And so God said, I want you to go to this rock. And I want you to take your staff. And I want you to strike the rock. So he gets the wisdom of God. He gets the direction to go to the rock. See how important it is to be, to hear God, know where God wants you to be. So you don't miss your blessing. He said, go to, go to the rock. And the instructions were, strike the rock with the rod. And when he struck the rock with the rod, guess what happened? Water came out. Then he spoke to him another time. That's why you have to be careful in season. Because every season, God don't speak to you the same. And the wisdom that he gives you may be different. This time, he said, Moses, go to the rock. That's the wisdom. Here's the, here's the, here's the direction. Go to the rock. Now, here's the instruction. Don't hit the rock. Speak to it. See, sound, sound, sound similar, right? Pilate went to the same rock, but the instructions were different. How often we try to do something in another season with the same instruction from last season? You know why we do that? Because we didn't hear God. We missed him. We missed him. Now we guess it. Now he hit, instead of him speaking to the rock, he hit the rock again. Because you know why? He got results last time. That don't mean you won't get results this time. He didn't get results this time. Why? Because he was disobedient. So how, how, how do we expect God to bless us when we disobedient? So he hit the rock. He spoke to the rock. Uh, he hit the rock again. And guess what? He was operating out of the will of God. That's how important it is for us to be in alignment with God. Because if you're out of alignment with God, you can miss God in a season. It's just that tedious, y'all. And let me say this to you. The closer you get to him, the more detailed the instructions become. You know why? Because you, you start to develop a trust with God. And God began to develop a trust in you. And so now your assignment become greater. So that means your hearing 
must become greater. The closer you get, the closer you into. See, when we all the way from God, just think about God. God is being from, from me to this door where, where Jalen is sitting. Now he's a distance away from me. So he speaks to me, I can hear him. But as I keep getting closer to him, the sound becomes clearer. Y'all follow me? That's why you need to get closer to God. Because the closer you get, the more clearer you hear him. You go from, I thought I heard him, to I knew I heard him. That's, the difference is how close you are to him. The closer you are to a person, the clearer you hear him. The further away you are from him, you start to guess it, and you're straining to hear. But the closer you get to him, the clearer the instructions become. You want clearer instructions in your life? Get closer to God. Simple as that. You want, you, want, you want more clarity? Get on your face, get closer to God, and watch him speak to you. Is that making sense? We must seek to do his will, not our will. You know you have your own will, right? We fight that every day, right? You fight your human will and God's will. And God's will will always override human will. Thank God it's right. So the way you get things, the way you get things is being properly positioned. So when he says, seek first the kingdom, you're pursuing God. Let's just uh, review this. We're pursuing God. We're getting in position. And he said, when you pursue him first and pursue him in everything. Let me, let, me, let me say that. Not in some things. And pursue him every day. Every moment. And every time you pursue God and you get in position, then Jesus said, then these things will be added to you. What things? The, the list that he just named. Your, your, the clothes you worry about, the shoes you worry about, the job you worry about. All those things become to be, become a blessing and it overtakes you. This is what Deuteronomy chapter 28 talks about. But Jesus said in order for that to happen, you must be relentless in your pursuit of God. When you pursue God and you get in position, wealth will come to you. Health will come to you. Passion, joy, peace, fulfillment. There's so many people looking for fulfillment. You know your true fulfillment is when you get in God's kingdom and live a kingdom life. That's when you truly fulfill. How many people you know that's not fulfilled? And let me say, it has nothing to do with age. Because you got people that's well up in age. They'll tell you I've been saved a long time. Thank God the kingdom ain't based on longevity. Because everybody think they got it made. Then I've been saved 20 years. You've been saved 20 years, but you're in the same place. I mean, I'm not understanding. You've been saved 20 years. You ain't in the same place. And I'm going to be inspired by you? No. Christianity is not the kingdom. We talked about that last week. Christianity is not the kingdom. Christianity is a religion. Christianity is not the kingdom. It's a religion. And that's why you can be in Christianity and not be fulfilled. You got people that speaks, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. They'll sing it off the rooftop. But when you see them, they always sad. Never seen a person that a Bible told tongue talking, believer, Christian, and every time you see them, they depressed. Like, is anything on they depressed, they negative? That ain't kingdom. That's not. That's not the kingdom. You got a religion, but that's not the kingdom. So Christianity is not the kingdom. The kingdom is a government. It's a government. So the kingdom of God brings wholeness into your life. How many want to be whole? I don't want to be half. Can't do nothing with half. I need the whole thing. I don't want, listen, it does me no good to have a bank account full of money, Jalen, and I'm sick. 
I need the holiness of God. I want the holiness of God. So Jesus was saying to the disciples, you know what? This is all the things, verse 25 to 32, this is all the things that the Gentiles seek after. So he said, this is what they go after. But the people that are in the kingdom of God, they got two priorities. Seek first the kingdom and get in position. Yes. And when you seek the kingdom first in everything, you, that means he would not say, talk about seek the kingdom and finance. He said, keep the kingdom in your family. You need, to, you need God to be a, a better mother, a better, uh, a better father, a better wife, a better husband, a better, in every level, every, every area of your life. You need to seek God's kingdom. And he said, when you do that and you get in position, he said, everything else is going to be added to you. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to ask for it. They're going to call you. Y'all, the Bible don't lie. How can you obey God and live by God's laws and principles and not prosper? It would make him out to be a liar. And Numbers 23 and 19 tells us that he's not a man that he should lie. So all we got to learn to do is seek the kingdom. But we don't talk enough about it. We talk enough about other things. But if, but if I could teach you how to pursue God's kingdom, don't just preach a good message on it. How can I pursue it? And you start putting these, the, 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 the kingdom laws and principles in place. Y'all, success is inevitable. It's not even a debate. The results just going to follow you. And then they ask you, well, why does keep happening to you? Because I'm, I'm applying this. I'm applying what you tell me to do. You, like, you, you cannot apply. Look, you can't take a cake box with the recipe and do everything that the, the cake box the recipe called for. You do everything. Don't miss one step. And that cake don't come out right. And you can be a person that says, I ain't a baker, but you can follow the instructions. That's what God is saying. He's saying, listen, it's not complicated. You make your life complicated. I didn't, I didn't make it complicated. You made it complicated. He said, here it is. I'm giving you the recipe. One, two, three. If you follow one, two, three, then your life will be blessed. If you don't, and it don't work out, then it's not my fault. And then we start to say, oh, that's God's will. No, it's not. You're hard-headed. And you stop it. And you won't listen. And, and they told us when we were coming up, a hard head made what? Come on. There had to be some truth to that. That ain't, a, ain't even a proverb in the Bible, but it probably could have been. Because y'all know we heard it. In other words, what they were telling you was, go out and do it if you want to. I'm telling you, if you do it, what's going to happen? Now, if you're going to do it, you on your own. That's what God is saying. I'm giving you the recipe for success, but you choose your own path. That's what he's saying. How many people choose their own path? And the Bible clearly tells us the way of a transgressor is hard. When you transgress, you mean you go your own way. I mean, kind of make us wonder if we if I elevated, go all the way to the top. <laughs> you mean to tell me God said, do this? And if I do this, this will happen. And it's right in front of you, but you won't do what he said. You won't do that. Oh, God, help us. That's why. Then we got another nerve to say, the Lord just want me to go through this season. <laughs> no, he don't. Who told you that? Who told you he wanted you to go through this? He didn't want me to go through because he's trying to teach me something. Who told you that? No, you, just be honest with yourself and transparent. You hard-headed. You didn't listen. He showed it to you in the dream. He ain't do it. God help us. So, Jesus says this. I'm closing with this. He says, in order 
To enter into the kingdom of God, you must become like a little child. And I'm going to give you 12 characteristics real quick. 12 characteristics of a child. And y'all can nod your head if you agree with them or not. But I agree with every, all 12 of these as I was doing some studying on this today. Because you think about that, I want you to think about a child, a little kid. A little kid that have not gone through any experiences in life. This is the characteristic. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, this is how we have to come into the kingdom. You know, you know, number one, the first trait, the first characteristic of a child is dependency. A kid depends on their parents, right? They, de they depend on their mother or their father, right? They depend, they, de they depend on, the, on, on their parents. One of the greatest threats to the kingdom is to become independent. When you don't need God, and you take God, you don't need him, your life get hard. Nothing else to say. Your life just get hard because you're apart from God. And then the next one, number two, simplicity. Kids like just like stuff. This makes things simple. We make things difficult and hard. You, you, you study that kids. We got teachers in here. It's, it's just simple. It don't take a whole lot to please a kid. It's simple. Most of them, anyway. Right, they hadn't, that's exactly right. If somebody hadn't gotten to them. But we just talking about a, just a child that's innocent. And then the next thing, they trust him. You ever have to tell a little kid, you know you got to tell a little kid? Now, now, you don't talk to strangers. Because you can tell, anybody can tell a person, a little kid something, they'll believe it in a minute. Because they, they, they so trusted. Now, now listen to these characteristics. Because this is how God wants to be with him. He wants us to be dependent on him. He wants he want us to be just simple. Don't make it complicated. I didn't make that complicated. You did. And trust it. Do you trust me? Number, number four, obedience. Now, you know, we know kids going to try things. But when it's something they want, that's what? Tell them to do something else, baby. Acceptance. Except kids are, it can be very accepting. God wants us to be that way. He wants us to be like, just like a kid. Expectancy, that's a big one. They expect things. Don't tell them you want to do something and don't do it. That's going to be, that tied to the next one too. So expectancy, number seven is transparency. Children are very transparent. Wouldn't you agree? They'll tell you if something ain't right with you, they're going to tell you. And you have to kind of like, don't say that. They'll tell you out in public in front of everybody. And think it's okay because they're innocent. When somebody's innocent, they don't know no better. They just think it's okay. That's just my care. That's my human nature. God is saying, I want you to be like that. I want you to be so transparent that you know this is this is your spiritual human nature that I'm gonna take care of. That's number seven. Number eight, move it quickly. Innocence. I just talked about that. They're, they got an innocent characteristic about themselves. Children. And faith. Man, children got mountain moving faith. You can't tell a child but just believe they believe they can fly off a building. And if you don't tell them and catch them before they do that, you know, they gonna they gonna get a cake. Ain't gonna try. Dr. Bill Winston, Dr. Bill Winston shared a story when he was a little boy. He watched Superman. So he got on top of the house with his cape and come on off the roof. And he found out there's a thing called gravity. You guys see? So, so they, they have faith and until somebody just poisoned them. They believe they can believe anything. Do you believe that God can do anything? Yes. Then number, number, number 10, boldness. They bold. They bold. Are we bold? God looking for us to be bold. Number 11, confidence. Confident. Are you confident in God? Are you confident in Him? Or you think He just come through sometime? I'm confident in Him. And the last one, I love number 12. Little children, most little children are fearless. 
Man, they'll try stuff. If you don't tell them the store why, they're going to put their head on it. Now, when they get burned, they're going to figure out what's going to eat to them. That's why when, you, when they're outside playing, if you don't watch them, they see you. Guess what? They have to walk off the street. If you don't tell them, turn, stop. Look both ways. Why? Because they fear this. Remember when, when my son started getting in the water? The boy had us so nervous. Oh my God, he had us nervous. I told, I told, I told Lady T, I say, he need to get him some swimming lessons, because I said he, he, he got me nervous. We put him in the pool at my mama's house. And my dad, the boy had us so nervous, my dad took a rope. <laughs> Tied a rope around him. Put, we had floaties on his arm. Just as me, he had floaties on his arm. He didn't dive up in the and his dad said, nah, he said, I'm gonna get a rope. Put a rope around him. And every time he, he tried to die, he pulled a rope. <laughs> and I told his mama, I say, as soon as he come to age, he gotta get some swimming lessons. <laughs> Because it's going to not be good. <laughs> and now we got a swimming pool at home. And now we see why he needs a swimming lesson. Because he got a diving board on the deep end. He goes on the deep end. He, 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 so, he loved water so much, he just comes out of the house, run out the back door in all of his clothes, <laughs> and jump in the water. I see. See, that's why. See, because he was fearless. He didn't know. He just said, well, I'm good. <laughs> so, I think that really resonates with kids. God looking for us to be fearless. Yeah. And I'm going to leave you with this. Challenge God to do something that you think is too big for him to do. Now, notice what I said. You challenge him. Because see, that's what we struggle. We don't challenge him. God asked a question one time. Is is my, is my, you know how he said, he said, are my hands too short? So challenge God. See, what we do is, and I was thinking, we limit God. Take the limits off in these next six months. Can I challenge you to take the limits off these next, what do you need God to do? Do you think it's too much for God to open the door to pay your house no wrong? To pay your house off in full? Do you think it's too big for God to do something miraculous in your life? Do you believe it? Are you crazy enough to believe it? God, yes. God needs some crazy people. I'll be one. Anybody want to join me? But look at the hands. It's the only time you can call me crazy. Be crazy for God. Because you know what? I'm just crazy enough because he's going to do it. Because I've seen him do some crazy stuff. Have you seen him do some crazy things? Yeah. Stuff that just won't make sense to right. the natural eye, right. to the natural ear, and they look at it like, how in the world that happened? You, are you something wrong with you? You gonna go get a building? With what? What you gonna do? Because God told me to do it. Because he's crazy. He needs some people like that. He needs some people like that. Moses was, Moses Moses wasn't right. Paul wasn't right. But God said, I need him. He need us. Come on, stay with me. I'm challenging you to get in pursuit of the kingdom. Not a religious message. You don't need another religious message. You need a kingdom word. Study God's word. I get up in the morning and say, Lord, I want to learn more about your kingdom. I need to know about your kingdom and how to apply these laws to my life. Every law to my life. Every law to my life. Do you know that a person in your family that you're trying to win over to Christ, if they don't see the fruit in your life, do you know they're not interested? And the God you know? Why do you want to come to church with me? Because I'm looking at your life. And you ain't got a whole lot going on. So if you go into the church that you go into, and you want me to serve the God that you know, 
And I'm looking at your life. I'm in the street and I'm more happy than you. That's a problem. That ain't that ain't no that ain't nothing to brag about. That's I'm supposed to go back in our prayer closet, Lord. That, do I look that bad? You think that bad? Yeah. But when you living in the kingdom, guess what they gonna come do? After a while, they gonna either go get tired of you talking about your blessings <laughs> and knock on your door and say, baby. You've been telling me this all along. I ain't want to hear it before, but I'm getting sick and tired of you. Every time I look, you posting what the Lord has done for you. Every time I look, you telling me what the Lord has done for you. And I want, I want a piece of that. Now I got your attention. Guess what? You didn't have to say nothing because the results is what pulled them in. Yo, if works was doing it, every time I, every Bible, as, as the old folks would say, every Bible toting person would get you saved. But if anything, they run it the other way. But when I look at your life and I see the fruit, I'm like, man. And then they start thinking, the Lord love us more than he love me? No. But you know what happened? I got a relationship with him. You can have one with him too. Come on. That's what, that's what it's all about. Because let me tell you something. What I'm learning now in the Word, if you broke and I'm broke, guess what? We can't help each other. We can sit at the table and complain. Let's, let's put our bills on the table and all our stuff. Girl, you got more than me. But when I said, I said, hey, no, I got, I got here, here's, the, here's the recipe. And then everything started changing. I challenge you, these next six months, we're talking about rebranding. I'm challenging you. Rebranding takes place from the inside in, inside out. I promise you, if you start doing what you should, young people hear me tonight, you get relentless in your pursuit of God. Watch doors just swing open for you. You're not even going to have to knock on them. They're going to open for you. Challenge you. I challenge you. I'm challenging you all here that these next six months be relentless. Because I told you, I said on the call the other day, I said this on the call the other day because the Lord put this in my spirit so strong. He said, tell the people, if they get, if they become relentless in their pursuit of me, and six months from now, I'm going to introduce them to the person they never met on the inside. I'm ready. Anybody ready? Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your word. Your word is not complicated. But people can become complicated. Your word is very simple. If we would just obey you. Even what we don't understand. But we know your word says that we obey you. You said that we be willing and obedient. We'll eat the good of the land. If we be willing and obedient, we'll eat the good of the land. Jesus said these words. He said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto us. God, all the things that have been a concern will no longer be a concern. They will follow us. They will overtake us. And I believe your word on today. We have no excuse after hearing what we heard on this morning, on this evening. We have no excuse. All we need to do is get in place and get on our face. I pray that every person under the sound of my voice, that you would ignite a flame in them that will cause them to be relentless in their pursuit of your kingdom. And as they pursue you and they get in position, you promise that all these things will be added. We thank you. We honor you and we praise you. I pray, Father, for those that desire to sow a seed on tonight, every seed that is sown on tonight, I, I command an immediate harvest on that seed as it go into the ground of your kingdom, God, that it would bring forth 30, 60, 100-fold return. 
and we speak to the north, the south, the east, and the west wind and call in our harvest. And then it would come in not many days from now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Real quick, we're gonna get a uh, we're gonna get an offering. You can just just um, let me grab it real quick, and uh, we're gonna let you get let you go. each of you tonight we are we are going to uh we'll, we have morning man global call tomorrow at 6 a.m and for those that want to be a part of it to join us at 6 a.m we are on facebook and youtube and we are also on um we are also on thank you we're also um on um the free conference call app so you can listen to it go to our facebook page and listen to the recording you can't get on this listen to the recording it'll be a blessing to you Amen. And then, of course, on Sunday, this is second Sunday coming up, right? Second Sunday. So we have communion on second Sunday. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing communion on Sunday. And uh, I want to encourage you to invite somebody to come with you. Send them a text message and say, hey, would you come be a guest with, uh, at church on this weekend with me? You'd be surprised who, who will show up. Uh, with uplifted hands, we're getting ready to depart. Father, we thank you to, tonight for this gathering. We thank you for allowing us to assemble tonight. We thank you for the word on tonight uh, and the season that we're in, God. Uh, for such a time as this, you're calling us uh, and you're calling our uh, our families. You're calling our loved ones into, uh, into a time of revival. And we're just asking you right now, Lord, that as we leave uh, this place, we speak bountiful blessings over the rest of their week. And that, God, as they go into the weekend, Lord, uh, you will bless them with good surprises that uh, you will continue to cover them with divine protection, insight, wisdom, downloads uh, are going to come, God. I decree and declare that we're in a season of re reimbursement and everything that the palm worm, the canker worm, the calipula, and the locals have eaten up, everything will be restored, God. I believe your word on today. And we just thank you, Lord, that doors will continue to open as we are progressing through the month of June. We're expecting more testimonies to come of your goodness. And we thank you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Kingdom greetings to everyone. Thank God for a new year, 2023. And this is a time of giving. We thank God that you have partnered with us and have partnered with us over the last year. This is a new year to give you an opportunity to give. And so the Bible says... In Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 that as long as the earth remain there shall be seed time and harvest and we thank God that this ground of glory gatherings ministries are fertile it's a fertile ground that you can sow seed into and so we just thank God and want to give you an opportunity to sow seed and even partner with us this year if you would like to partner with us this year you can do that this year through your giving and so we thank God for this time of giving and we decree and declare bountiful blessings upon you and your family, your household, that this will be a year that you will have debt canceled. This will be a year that you will have mortgage paid, made mortgages paid off, student loans paid off. We believe in God with you. We're standing in agreement with you. We're standing in agreement with God's word. And we are praying for you. The ways of giving is on the screen. And we ask that you would um, continue and consider partnering with us throughout the course of the year. We thank God for you. We pray for you and your family. God bless you. Kingdom blessings, everyone. Thank you for joining our service on today. Whether you were in person or you joined us on live stream, thank you for your continued support. And we want to encourage you to meet us on next Sunday, next same Sunday. time, 10 a.m. for prayer. 10.30 a.m. for our worship service. You will not be disappointed. Please Amen. invite someone to join you on next Sunday. Same time, same place. We speak bountiful blessings over you. We
May your week be filled with good surprises. Amen. Blessings.